we don't have anyone behind us. Let's do a launch control launch here. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the throttle, and it's holding us at 4,000 RPM, and go. Hello, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Today we're going to be taking a Tango Red Metallic Audi S3 up into the mountains of Colorado. <laughs> You join me in the interior of this 2022 Audi S3. Uh, this is new to the US market for 2022 after a hiatus with the A3 and S3 for the 2021 model year. And we're gonna be driving uh, an S3. It is Tango Red Metallic. This is a premium plus. Uh, so it does have the premium plus package which adds adaptive cruise control. It has a technology package, black optics package, uh, the fine Napa leather package and the S Sport package, which adds the rest or the red brake calipers and the sport suspension with damper control. That's what we're really going to be trying out today. And let's get out of the city here in Denver and head up to the mountains. We're going to be shifting it into drive here with this kind of strange shifter, but normal on newer Audis with a large surrounded piano black. Not a huge fan of that, but that's fine. Um, so we're in drive, let's put it into sport, and let's adjust our drive select settings. And we're gonna leave it in, we'll put it in comfort for this drive out of the city. And we've got our climate set, let's adjust the wheel here. Mirrors look good, and let's get going here. Now turn left. Then turn left. We're going to be leaving the voice on just so that I actually know where I'm going. It tends to be helpful. In 300 feet, turn left at the stop sign, then keep straight. Now turn left, then keep straight. So far feels good. Interior is quite nice and premium. I do like the honeycomb interior as with most S Audis. So the 2022 Audi S3 and A3, they have an all new interior. Uh, we've got the integrated MMI, we've got a digital cockpit, um, all new door controls. It's a little bit bigger, a little taller, a little wider, a little longer. Got a nice uh, aluminum inlay here. It's kind of cool. The MMI actually shows elevation. I like that, especially in Colorado. So we're at 5,200 feet right now, and we should be going up to about 8,000 feet on this route. It's a little interesting that they went away from the slight flat bottom on the S cars. It's just a full circle wheel. I kind of liked having a little bit of a flat bottom personally. Overall ride comfort seems solid so far. Got a cool little key here. It does have auto start stop as we just experienced. Actually, it was pretty unintrusive, surprisingly. And I believe we're going to be hopping on the interstate here first, yep, on I 70. Feels nice and flat through that little corner, obviously not very high speed. Definitely some pickup there. Let's see how it handles through this loop here, heading on to I-70. Please follow I-70 westward eight miles. 
ride is quite comfortable. Throttle response is good and drive. Brakes are a little touchy as Audis tend to be. And it has 14.1 inch two piece rotor, so it has an aluminum hat and cast iron. Uh, actual braking surface, which is a new move for an S car versus an RS car. And let's see how it does from interstate speed. Those are some big numbers. It gets up and get, gets up and scoots. Ride comfort is good. We are on run flat tires, I believe. I will have to double check that. Ride is, a, or NVH is a bit high. It's quite loud in here, surprisingly. I'm actually a little disappointed in the loudness of the car. But ride comfort is quite good. I'm impressed. Let's put it into dynamic here. And see how it stiffens things up. It's fairly noticeable, the slight increase in roughness. And here we actually have a older body style 8.3 just driving along. You join me back now as we're heading into Boulder area and we're heading up into the mountains. I'm going to be putting the car into sport mode on the transmission. We'll be slipping. We'll be flipping the drive select into dynamic. And we'll put the ESC into sport. Immediately noticing the throttle response is much sharper and the shifts are much quicker. Ride is firm, but not rough. All right, we've killed the voice on Navigation, that should be much better, and let's go for a rip. And we're heading, like I said, into the Colorado mountains west of Denver, and it should be a good time. Hopefully we don't get caught up in too much traffic. That's always the worst time when you're heading into the mountains. Sounds quite good. It's not quite five cylinder like an RS3 that's coming next summer, um, but it sounds pretty good. It's holding gear, it's kind of right where I would expect it to be gear wise, which is good. And I do have it in sport transmission mode, as I mentioned. I might have to find a pull off and let some of these cars go ahead so I can actually get a feel for this car. We do have quad tip exhaust on an S3, which is pretty slick. Looks good, they're actually functional quad tips, ears popping, we're already up to 6,100 feet. Get a little burble out of the exhaust. And let's let some of these other Audis go ahead a bit so that I can actually go for a little bit of a run. Caught up to the other cars. 
you can still confuse the DSG like you, you've always been able to, unfortunately, even with this new 7-speed. The way the DSG works, if you're not familiar, it essentially preloads the next gear either up or down depending on how you're driving. Uh, if you're hard on the acceleration, it, usually it will preload the next gear up. If you're cruising along, it will usually preload the next gear down in case you want to uh, accelerate. Um, but being a dual clutch, it instantly switches just with those wet clutch packs rather than actually having to physically switch gears because it's already preloaded. Seats are comfortable and pretty supportive. The, I am leaving a little room for desire on the lumbar support. There's not a whole lot there. Nice burbles from the exhaust. And let me get up to 60 and then we're gonna do an emergency full ABS brake, see how it does, no one's behind me. And ABS is good, good programming there. Came to a stop very quickly, those 14.1 inch front brakes definitely grabbed us. There's no jittering, no like, side to side movement it was just a nice firm flat brake mind you we are on pretty good pavement here fairly fresh but it is a bit chilly it's 45 degrees outside and we are on summer performance tires so certainly not ideal conditions for braking in that regard mid-range as far as heaviness not too heavy not too light not getting a whole lot of communication through the electronic rack unfortunately of what the front tires are doing Shift, buttery crisp shifts. And we're heading back out. Stop to take some photos. We're heading back out on this mountain road. Hopefully we hit a little less traffic this time. We'll go slow here at first. Excellent. Puts up some big numbers. down to 41 degrees.
We've got a rental Suburban ahead of us. Don't they know rental cars are the fastest cars in the world? Clearly they're not driving it as such. And a tractor going the opposite direction. That's interesting. Just Colorado things. I am going to be putting the ESC back to normal just to be on the safe side with snow on the ground and us being on summer tires. Rather not crash one of Audi's cars. It got dark and snowy very quickly as we went up in elevation. Wind noise is actually very minimal and it's pretty windy outside. Just bad weather lighting. Oh, and lucky for us, both of those people are turning off. No loss of traction there with flooring it as the roads are getting slippery, but the ground should still be fairly warm. lights on if it's snowing or precipitating in any way run your headlights people especially in a white car you know, there they go maybe putting on their lights now transmission shift logic when you're driving it hard is actually quite good Let's see if they maybe pull over for us We'll have to do an ABS brake here on a little bit more wet surface. Let's get some speed here and go for an ABS brake from 60. ABS logic is good. Definitely had some more wheel slip than prior. This is a good demonstration of proper Audi weather though, with the snow and Quattro. This is a Haldex based all wheel drive system being a transverse mount rather than longitudinal and it's based on the MQB platform, uh, similar to a lot of Volkswagen's prior gen A3, um, Q3. Now we're getting the big fluffy flakes. This car's gonna end up covered in snow. control launch here if I can find a straight spot see how it handles wet roads and we're at 8300 feet elevation so we're definitely still climbing ears are popping again as we start going downhill, it's holding gear nicely to maintain engine braking and kind of help maintain constant speed. It's hard to make a case for needing much more power than this on mountain roads. We don't have anyone behind us. Let's do a launch control launch here. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the throttle, and it's holding us at 4,000 RPM, and go. Keep in mind we are at 8,600 feet. I would say that was pretty solid. Did have a little bit of wheel spin at the beginning. 
that's to be expected. steam from the wet roads as we came to a stop there but brake pedal still rock solid I am smelling brakes however we're getting into a little bit more technical area of this road This car feels right at home whether you're commuting to work or if you're ripping it through canyon roads. ABS braking even from higher speed, very good. Still solid, even if they're smoking a little bit. ABS still good, even with hot brakes. It would take some pretty hard driving in mountain roads to get beyond the capabilities of this car, I think. It's maintaining temperature well. We're up to 240 degree coolant temp, which I don't find alarming. And we're down to 31 degrees outside temp. Fahrenheit. And let's flip it into comfort. We'll put it into drive. Put it back into drive and we'll turn our stability back on. And just drive it how a normal person would probably drive on these roads, see how it does. quite comfortable. It's noticeable how much smoother it is in comfort suspension versus sport, or sorry, dynamic. I would probably do individual settings and probably put the dampers onto comfort, um, but have the throttle set to sport for my mountain driving configuration. Brakes, again, still good. They probably cooled down a bit by now. Not a whole lot of communication through the steering wheel. It's really unfortunate. Can't really tell what those front tires are doing, which I would like to know given our fairly limited traction here. We're seeing some snow flurries again. We're at 9,000 feet. Sharp curves ahead. We like that sign. The steering wheel feels really good. Interior feels solid as it should on an Audi. They always do. I'm a huge fan of the exterior design of this car. I think it's a really nice looking car. I think they're going to be getting a lot of BMW customers being that new BMWs quite frankly are kind of ugly. So I think a lot of former BMWs are going to be looking at Audi, seeing how well designed this car is and how fresh it looks. It's a Pretty functional design with the quad tips, with the grills for brake cooling, uh, honeycomb grill is stylish. I would drive one of these.
And we're stuck behind a Toyota Tacoma. Hopefully they pull off to allow me by. That would be nice of them. Oh, I like that view with the full map. That's nice. Let's cycle through some of these. We've got oil temp as well on this screen. Burn through about a quarter tank of gas. And let's wrap up this driving impressions video for this first drive. This 2022 Audi S3, it's comfortable, it's stylish. You can drive it to work every day. You can rip it on a mountain road. It's nicely equipped in the interior. It's nicely equipped performance-wise, has plenty of power. And I'd have no qualms recommending one. If you're in the market for a small, fairly hot sedan, this is probably your car if you're looking for something a bit hotter. Wait till next year with the RS3. I'm sure it will be just another step above this as far as performance, which perfectly honestly, I find this more than adequate. If you're looking for a hatchback, Golf R is very similar to this, but in hatchback form. And again, I'm Brandon Flash with Auto Spec Reviews, and we'll see you in the next one.